Thank you. Um, I'm going to keep it short because I know everyone is ravenously hungry before lunch. Uh, my name is Greg O'Brien. I come from Griffith College, Dublin. I'm a learning technologist. And I want to just tell you a very quick story about migrational change at an institutional level, or as Claire was talking about, um, uh, uh, what an upgrade on, a, uh, on just one single upgrade uh, uh, across um, uh, uh, one institution. So I've added an Isaac Asimov very funny uh, quote here, which I'm sure some of the DevOps will get. So I want to um, talk to you about a project to migrate from one Moodle to another at faculty level across course administrators um, aimed at upgrading from an ancient version of Moodle to um, a new version. And at the same time, slipping in some aesthetic and performance-based uh, changes. So we've got around 7,000 students across four campuses across Ireland, hundreds of lecturers and part-time and full-time lecturers. And so we started planning this around December 2017. Um, and around a year ago, we started getting very serious about implementing this project. And so it's a massive, I'm sure many of us know from the past couple of days, culture change across an institute is an impossible task. And getting GDP, remember GDPR? Anyone remember that? Oh, what an impossible mission that was as well. And also we wanted to get people into the mode of reevaluating their content and updating it. So we came up with ARM, or an annual rollover of Moodle, and we tried to make it as painless as possible for staff and lecturers. So we had a test uh, site, or a, a, a sort of a staging area called um, Moodle ARM, and then we wanted everyone to do a massive backup and restore, and to populate Moodle Arm um, as it was created in June 2018, and then go live in September 2018. So we had a, a, an all-out training campaign. Um, we had training videos. We pushed this to the max across our, um, our, our faculties and our, our staff. We had two videos. Um, one was an outline of how the ARM process would, would, would happen and what our vision was for implementing it. And the other one was a much more practical step-by-step, -step, what do I do to achieve this? Uh, and if you bear in mind for just one second, our legacy Moodle was 11 years old, so we had tons of data. So we had a concerted messaging campaign and workshops, videos with IT. Um, it really was a heroic mission to bring all of our staff across the line. We had faculty messaging, drop-in clinics, and what I call house-to-house -house faculty training. The phone w should have been hopping all of the time, e every moment. And so we upgraded, I think, from 3.2 to 3.4, running a move theme. Um, I think, I can't remember the name of the chap who created that theme, but it's a lovely thing. At the same time, we wanted to incorporate or slip in more technology and just to make Moodle a, a little bit more aesthetic and to make it perform a little bit better for what our, our, our staff needed. So we introduced these technologies. I think Zoom was mentioned yesterday uh, at some point uh, as uh, a webinar uh, um, function. And we used a French technology called Ubicast to uh, stream live from our classrooms and to provide screencasting. H5P and our Maze Map app. But the closer we got to September, the more nervous we got about a massive um, the scramble to get everything in place by um, the time students arrived. And of course, many of our part-time lecturers were on holidays during the summer. So there was a lot of panic. This is a picture of me from back then. The nightmare scenario, everyone back up, backing up and restoring um, at the last minute, uh, resulting in a massive collapse of all infrastructure um, and seizing up of all of our systems what was going to happen.
Everything was fine, actually. It was totally fine. Everything was fine. There was a smooth transition. There wasn't a seizing up of all of our Moodle systems. Most lecturers restored their, their courses and backed up within a two-week period. It didn't all happen over the summer. Um, it wasn't a night, uh, not uh, the night before day one of semester one. The system didn't grind to a halt. Training was a success, and we had minimum uh, disgruntlement amongst our staff. Everything was fine. And yes, a year later, we're into season two of our annual rollover of Moodle. Thank you. Starving. A success story. Very good. Um, does anyone have any questions for Greg? Oh, got a hand straight up there in the middle. No. Bobby, going to race to to the sky. Excellent. Oh, hi. Um, I was just interested, from obviously the last time you went through this, uh, you were kind of doing, you know, 11 years worth of um, sort of backups and restore, whereas this time it's kind of been a year. I just was interested about how your process will be different now it's becoming kind of a business as usual. Yes. Um, well, it's, it's the first iteration, so um, the pain, there was a little bit of, um, there was like 1% disgruntlement with having to perform. Most people don't want to do a backup and restore. Most people don't want to reevaluate their content, yet they have to because our pro programmatic reviews and um, our oversight at a, a national level in education require us to do so. So there's a few sticks, I, I, it's a horrible metaphor, to beat people with. But in fact, we have history now where it, it isn't, the support's there from us, from IT, in our institution, and it isn't an impossible task. In fact, it's a very quick task now. So I'm hopeful um, uh, that the next um, iteration, which has already started, will be, um, will be equally as painless, or per perhaps pr provide some other challenges that we didn't come across last year. I don't know if that answers your question, though. Thanks, Greg. Any more questions? I'm doing a very long teacher pause. Apparently, teachers only take one second when they ask a question. They take one second to wait for the learners to respond. So I've learned to do long teacher pauses. That's what I was doing there. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Greg. Thanks.